Welcome everyone to the uh, remote special commission meeting of January 12th, 2022. My fellow commissioners uh, graciously uh, rescheduled this meeting on my behalf because I was not able to attend on Monday. And it's an important meeting because it's the first meeting of the new year. Uh, welcome to the public that is attending as well. Um, the Port of Olympia is working diligently to address the threat posed by COVID-19 to Thurston County, the state of Washington and the United States. On March 16, 2020, the commission adopted resolution 2020-03, authorizing certain emergency powers in light of the COVID-19 outbreak, including invoking applicable emergency exemptions to the meeting notice requirements and location restrictions of the Open Public Meetings Act. Pursuant to that resolution, the Port of Olympia Commission is conducting today's meeting remotely. The Port is following the guidance from Thurston County Health Department to take all efforts to prevent the spread of this virus and is acting in the interest in, of the safety and welfare of the public, the community, and our employees to limit its spread. So I'd like to ask uh, Bob Ayel if you'd like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and Typically, uh, Shayla will put a flag up on the screen. Sure. Uh, I pledge allegiance Pledge's to the flag, the flag of, of the United, the United States, States of America. America. And to, to the Republic. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm gonna forget it. Let me start <laughs> over. <laughs> okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, United of, States America. of America. And to, to the Republic. Republic. And for which, it stands. Republic, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with justice with liberty, for, all. for all. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. Sorry, yeah, thank, thank you, Commissioner. I, I need to bone up on that. <laughs> well, you'll get pretty. You'll get pretty good at it pretty quick. So no worries. Uh, next, we have on the agenda, and I'm going through nice and slow because for the benefit of the public. Uh, I start this meeting as chair, but I, I bet you that I do not finish this meeting as chair. So that's just a bet. Um, but next we have on the agenda, the approval of the agenda. And so at this time, I will ask if there are any amendments to the proposed agenda. Commissioner, if I if I might, uh, just to um, re remind the commission that this is a special meeting and there can be no uh, additions to, uh, to the uh, meeting agenda for this evening. Thank you, Sam. So Sam has raised a point of order, but she didn't call it that, mm -hmm. but that's basically what it is, point of order to the process. And and I say, as chair, uh, I agree with that point of order. So therefore I'll withdraw my statement of asking for amendments to the agenda and I'll simply ask for approval. Is there a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved. Thank you, second. Commissioner Evans. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to, to approve tonight's agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, we have an agenda. Next on the agenda is special reports. Do we have any special reports, Executive Director Gibney? We do not this evening. And so let's move to Executive Director Report. Sam? We do have that. Shayla can bring up the PowerPoint. Terrific. Um, thank you. You can go to the next slide. And I need to have one. So uh, effective Tuesday, January uh, 11th, that was just yesterday, all Port of Olympia offices were closed to the public until further notice out of an abundance of caution to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Port business and administrative functions will continue with limited access to the general public. Staff is working and available by phone. All of our operations are um, uh, still un underway. Uh, we do have uh, uh, a number of uh, people out um, either in, in quarantine or who have um, contracted the virus. A full list of operational changes can be found at the port's website at www.portolympia.com as well as on our social media platforms. Next slide. Uh, 
I'd really like to recognize all of our maintenance marina and boat work staff members who spent numerous days cleaning snow during the, the, the big storm. A very special thank you to, to three staff members who plowed snow at the Olympia Regional Airport for nine hours the Sunday after Christmas. Thank you to Ian Guerrero, Aaron Porson, and Alec Riggles. I'd also like to mention the last snow event was handled by port staff without the need to call in an outside contractor. It's part of our ongoing unified maintenance approach, um, saving the, uh, the port money. So adding to that cost effectiveness, really uh, a, a big shout out to everyone. They just did an excellent job. I actually got a uh, text from uh, acting director Rudolph, while I was on vacation, that he uh, said that in his 18 years of being at the port, he thought it was the best snow removal operation ever. So thank wow. you. A uh, big shout out to the staff. Next slide. In collaboration with the port properties team, our facilities maintenance team put together an information packet, which included information about how to support the, po the port snow and ice plan during the inclement weather. Maintenance staff also provided 21 snow and ice kits to port property tenants. These buckets were consisted of a five gallon bucket of EcoMelt scoop <coughs> and an MSDS sheet for the environmentally friendly product to de-ice. Next slide. A new HVAC system was installed at the airport retail suite 103. The suite is home to our new port tenor, tenant Cutter's Barbershop. Hmm. Next slide. And yours, yours truly, your executive director took some time out from her vacation to spread the, uh, to extend the hand of port friendship in the port of Curacao. Curacao is a small island located just off the coast of Venezuela. I was able to visit. They were in fairly limited operations because of COVID on, on the island there. They did give me a short um, tour of, of facilities and uh, talked about their uh, ongoing operations. If we think that we are alone in being um, affected by, uh, by things, I can tell you they normally see 800,000 cruise passengers per year. And last year they saw 100,000. So um, uh, they, they've been greatly impacted and yet they are uh, continuing operations uh, just like us. And it was um, uh, great to see them in action. And I have to tell you, I even got to take the 20, 21 year old and he's always impressed by what his mom does for work. <laughs> nice tan, nice tan. <laughs> and next slide. As always, we have ways to, to the public to engage with us. Here are some easy ways to contact us, give us feedback, or request a conversation. And that's it for my report this evening. Thank you, Sam. Uh, commissioners, uh, sometimes you can feel free to jump in with a question or a comment about you know, Sam's executive report, what have you, but anyway. Good job on the uh, snow removal mm -hmm. and uh, Good job uh, showing the flag over there in the lovely port of Curacao. I, I can say that because I've been there. It's quite nice. It's a pretty place, the town, the, the island. So uh, next, okay, wait. Okay, next on the agenda then. Thank you for that, Sam. We have a, a litigation report. Uh, Valicia, do we have any litigation report tonight? Thank you, Commissioner. I do not have a litigation report for you all this evening. Okay, very good. Next, we move to public comment and commission response. And I want to thank the public for attending. I see a list of folks uh, having attended. I also got uh, at least two names of folks who have signed up ahead of time to give public comment. And the first, I believe, is uh, Mr. John Cezanne. So if I said that right. So uh, Mr. Cezanne, are you on the call tonight? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, very good. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, my name is John Cezanne. You were pretty close on that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and I am a resident of Olympia. Uh, thanks to new commissioners, Bob Isle and Amy Evans for your willingness to serve on the Port Commission and to serve the people of Thurston County. It is such a great asset to have a leader from the Nisqually tribe with experience in running a large enterprise on the commission in these times when our environment is under siege from the climate emergency. Uh, 
We surely need the wisdom of our indigenous people to help us deal with what is the greatest challenge we currently face. And the port can have a huge impact helping our community deal with some of these challenges. So it is really good to have Mr. Isle on board. And Ms. Evans has a lot of experience that will be a benefit to the Port Commission. And I appreciate her commitment to democratic governance and community engagement. That being said, I was very disturbed by some of the proposals put forward by the executive director at the January 6th work session. These included proposals to limit public comment and transparency, such as eliminating the litigation report from the public commission meetings, to deny, resp deny response from the commissioners to public comment, and to discontinue commission chats with the public. Let's be very clear about the responsibilities that this commission has to the people of Thurston County. You levy taxes on the public to the tune of about $6 million per year or thereabouts. This is not chump change. You are a tax supported public entity. Therefore, you are obliged to be as open and transparent as possible. These proposals go in the opposite direction. If implemented, the port will be less transparent and more opaque. Both Mr. Isle and Ms. Evans have stated that educating and engaging the public about the port is a top priority. The commissioner should be developing strategies to do just that not the opposite to these, as these new proposals do. Actually, I think if the, the public were better informed, they would probably not be very supportive of the current state of affairs at the port. If a, render, if a referendum were put before the public that asked them if we should be subsidizing terminal operations to the tune of about $1 million a year, how do you think that one would go? If you voted yes or no, probably not very well. But that is a discussion for another day. I'm glad to hear that strategic planning is an important part of the agenda for 2022. There is certainly a lot to consider going forward. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cezanne, for your comments. Uh, next, we have uh, Carla Wolfsburg. Uh, Ms. Wolfsburg, are you on the call? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Carla Wolfsburg and I live in Tumwater. And I, I want to let you know that I appreciate all the efforts of the port to provide the public with information and encourage you as a government body to strive to fulfill this fundamental duty of transparency, which is the foundation of the democratic process. I commend Commissioner Evans, who at your January 6th meeting stated she believes so much in democracy. And I thank both Commissioners Isle and Evans, who at that same meeting supported robust communication with the public to encourage citizen involvement and education about the port. Therefore, any effort to reduce transparency by the port would limit our knowledge and restrict our ability to be involved. This being said, I'm very troubled by a number of potential changes presented by the executive director at your special session on January 6th that would in fact reduce the port's transparency. So I'm asking the commission to retain the two port work sessions per month. These are important regular meetings and very much benefit the public and allow for that public feedback. And I ask that you keep the commissioner chat forums. This gives the public an opportunity to speak with individual port commissioners to ask questions, express our needs and concerns in an informal setting. And I ask that you please do not require that all port commissioners speak with one voice. Clearly, this does not support a solid democratic process. Commissioners need to have their individual voices heard by their constituents. A slide presented by the exec executive director cited port resolution 2021-03 as a justification for this change, but I read the resolution and I cannot find language that states commissioners must speak with one voice. Under number nine of that resolution, it does say the commissioners will respect the decisions of the port commission and not undermine those decisions. Respecting the results of a vote is very different. So I ask you please include the litigation reports at every commission meeting. The public does have a right to know what lawsuits have been received by the port and that would, of course, a limit, uh, would also restrict the transparency. Finally, I ask that the Commission puts on its agenda, as soon as possible, a discussion to investigate Commissioner Evans' conflict of interest, which was requested 
and detailed in a letter sent to each commissioner and the executive director on January 7th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Wolfsburg. Uh, next, I saw a couple of hands raised and uh, the first hand I saw raised was uh, Ms. Deb Patton. Uh, Ms. Patton, are you on board? I'm here. I, um, I'm on my phone because I cannot, even though I've been trying since way before 530 to get logged in on my laptop, I can't get on the link. So I'm only on my phone. So um, okay. well, I was raising my hand to uh, congratulate Commissioner Evans on her engagement. And I just uh, got back from the Okanagan on a very circuitous route to uh, get our daughter married off out in the bleak midwinter <laughs> wow. outdoors in the snow and with all the passes closed and I-84 and all that. So I was just going to congratulate her on that. But um, I do also want to speak, um, and I'm sorry I didn't sign up before because I didn't know I'd be back by Monday's meeting and then I found out it was postponed till today. Um, I am the new chair of the uh, Port of Olympia Citizens Advisory Committee, the POCAC. And so I wanted to congratulate uh, the two new commissioners on their election. And I uh, wanted to say that the POCAC looks forward to working uh, with the commission. And I'm sorry that the January meeting is canceled, but I do understand all the restraints around COVID. We are having a huge absentee rate in our um, staff and uh, student body in the public schools where I teach. So I understand it's it's a damn mess, a dang mess, and I do applaud the uh, Port um, Commission for the uh, vaccination mandate that they put in place. That's the only way we're going to get out of this. So thank you for that, and I look forward to our February uh, POCAC meeting. Hopefully that'll be the joint mission meeting with the commission, and uh, we have a number of projects that we've worked on in previous years that have yet to be um, approved uh, by the commission. And I hope we can move forward on those, including um, some revolving involving labor. And since we have some major um, construction projects uh, tentatively in the future, I wanna get that uh, labor agreement one, an apprenticeship one uh, voted on and some others that are dear to my heart. So. Um, anyway, congratulations to all three of you. Uh, congratulations, uh, Commissioner Evans, on your marriage upcoming. Uh, get well, Commissioner Downing. And uh, best wishes, Commissioner Il. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Patton. Uh, next, uh, I saw a hand for uh, John Newman. Mr. Newman, are you on board? Hello, hello. Oh, we can hear you. Hi, Mr. Newman. Oh, okay. Um, good evening, uh, commissioners. Welcome, new commissioners and Commissioner Downing to another year of excitement with the COVID, et cetera. Um, I wanted to say that um, I feel it's important that public comment be allowed uh, as the previous year, um, the publicly funded port uh, needs observation by Thurston County taxpayers for clarity. I also wanted to mention that to move forward with any new projects, a careful cost analysis is important. I agree with what Bob Iell mentioned uh, before that focusing on a possible five-year plan is a valuable process to move to the future. Uh, in, in order to use the public facilities of the Port of Olympia and the public employees in an efficient way, a plan should be made for the future. Using good economic cost analysis will clarify the best activities for the Port of Olympia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Uh, next we have, uh, I believe, uh, Lee Rinner. Did I pronounce that correctly, uh, Ms. Rinner? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can, please continue. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, this meeting today. Um, I would like to echo something that um, Ms. Wolfsberger mentioned. Um, 
Amy Evans was elected to the court commission, but uh, in her Olympian letter to the editor, October 2021, she has admitted conflict of interest. Um, Evans, of course, is a real estate agent or broker for Kidder Matthews. And um, as you're aware, any court commissioner may not beneficially um, accept any compensation, gratuity, or reward for their position um, as port commissioner. So I believe that the port commission must investigate uh, Amy Evans' conflict, or they will be guilty of malfeasance. Um, the port has to let um, this go forward before we can choose a uh, chair for the Port of Olympia. I know that the last meeting we had, uh, Joe Downey mentioned that he want, was, did not want to be chair anymore. And my concern is that if Port Commissioner Amy Evans assumes this position, it will be used for personal benefit. That's why we must have an investigation into Amy Evans' conflict of interest with her position, the Port of Olympia. She, of course, works for Kidder Matthews and uh, the Panatoni um, warehouse issues with the city of Tumwater is coming up uh, and will be um, discussed, will be a major point of activity with the Port of Olympia. And so this issue of her involvement with Kidder Matthews and Panatoni um, will be highlighted across our county. I'm very concerned that the Port of Olympia um, is going to do something illegal. And that's what would happen if um, she fulfilled her duties and got uh, with this conflict of interest, staring us all in the faces. As you know, any port uh, in violation of RCW 4223070 uh, may be fined $500, may be liable for criminal penalties and may be required to forfeit their office. So I hope this um, does not come to pass. And um, I hope that we have a full discussion about the chair for Port of Olympia. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. We must have full public comment like we have in the past. We must have uh, the ability for commissioners to respond to public comment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Renner, for your comments. Now, at this time, I'd like to ask if there's anybody else that'd like to give public comment that had not signed up ahead of time. Anybody else wanting to give public comment? Okay, hearing none, I'll turn to my fellow commissioners and ask at this time, you may or may not like to respond to public comment, any or all of the uh, folks that gave public comment tonight. Bob, do you wanna go or? Uh, go ahead, Amy, I, I can wait for you. Okay. Um, I, I think we hear, I heard you loud and clear about transparency and outreach. And that's something that in the little bit of time that we have had to meet before, we're excited to bring uh, more of that to the commission and also supporting Sam and the rest of the staff in, um, in finding policies that work and that support that and our best practices. So I think that I'm excited for us to support Sam and her staff and create those best practices. Um, and definitely want to keep transparency and outreach at the forefront. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, we, we do have Felicia's in-house counsel, and luckily we had plenty of time to think about my conflict of interest during the campaign um, to make sure that I could govern and wouldn't be a distraction to uh, the port's business. If there is additional, um, if there's a report from Felicia or an investigation that would be appropriate based on Sam and Felicia's recommendation, I would welcome that just so that the public is comfortable. Um, I am no longer involved with that project at all. I not only am foregoing my commission based on the continued concern, I have removed myself completely. So I'm not working on that project at all. 
Um, but I would just defer to Sam and Felicia on the best way to address the public's concerns so that um, we can get, get busy uh, doing good work for the port and working on that transparency and outreach so we can complete projects. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Evans. Uh, Commissioner uh, Ayal, you have comments? Um, yes, thank you, Commissioner Downing. Um, uh, first off, thanks to everybody who, who made public comment. Um, um, Mr. Saison, I appreciate your comments. Uh, I, I'm very excited to be a, a, a commissioner and, uh, and looking forward to, uh, um, to what we can accomplish here um, for, the, for the county, uh, Thurston County. Uh, Ms. Wolfsburg, I, 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 I believe I heard you say you sent an email to uh, commissioners uh, about, about that. And if, if, if you did, I just wanna tell you, I did not receive it. Um, so uh, um, I, I don't know if you wanna resend it or, or maybe I misheard you, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, thank you for your comments. Um, and, and thank you for your comments, uh, everybody. You know, I think uh, uh, as commissioners, you know, we were elected by the, the, the people of Thurston County um, to manage um, in, 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 uh, manage the, uh, the Port of Olympia. And as commissioners, you know, it's, 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 uh, um, <clears throat> it, it's part of our code of ethics. Uh, uh, part of our, uh, you know, our rules as operating rules as a commission that we uh, we have a duty of loyalty, and that duty of loyalty is to make decisions that uh, that are best for the for the organization, um, for the port. Uh, we have a duty of care that we're not uh, we're taking making good decisions and not not making decisions based on personal interest or or personal gain. And then you know the the topper of it is our fiduciary responsibility to everybody who lives in the county, and and to make sure that uh, uh, you know we are we are doing making sound financial decisions, sound environmental decisions, and uh, um, representing the the county as as best as we can and creating benefits for the county. Um, uh, you know, unfortunately, the 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 conflict of interest thing with the. Uh, um, um, Commissioner Evans, I, you know, I think she addressed it. Uh, I, I, you know, it's, it, it seems to be a distraction and, and, you know, unfortunately the distractions are only going to take away from us being able to do our, um, our, our, our due diligence and, and perform our, uh, our duties effectively. I, I do believe, and I'm, I'm certain we'll, uh, ask, uh, Felicia to, uh, uh, to look into the matter, and and if there is an investigation that we are required to conduct, I'm I'm certain we will uh, get that uh, get that advice and and take that under contract uh, under consideration, because uh, I, I I'm I'm just certain I know I'm, I don't want to speak for Commissioner Evans, but I know in myself if it was if I was in that position, I would want this resolved so that we can get past it and and uh, and and move forward as a as a commission. I know that we're all excited about you know the next. The next several years and in 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 making the port a better place and so um, uh, I, I assure you we will we will work work towards that goal. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Commissioner Ayal and Commissioner Evans, for your comments. And you know, first because it's so uh, close to home, I want to express my. A total support for Commissioner Evans and and the steps that she's taken to uh, distance herself from the potential Panettone uh, lease. And I think she's doing everything right. And as she mentioned, we've got in-house counsel of Alicia that can get in the nuances of what does that exactly mean to uh, you know remo remove yourself from decision making, discussion, what have you. So. You know, I have total confidence in Commissioner Evans. Uh, I'm so excited to have both Commissioner Evans and Commissioner Ayal on board. I'm so excited that the city of Tumwater uh, voted for Commissioner Evans. Uh, I believe it was 56%. So the, uh, the city of Tumwater, where much of our acreage is located, you know, has voiced their support. And that means a lot. But it also means a lot to have folks come to our meetings and give public testimony because it shows that you care about our community and, and, and you care about 
things like transparency and good government, which I think that you know this commission really cares about as well. So in terms of uh, Mr. Cezanne and uh, Ms. Wolfsburg's comments about uh, transparency, you know, we really do strive to be transparent, but also efficient. So, uh, you know, we're going to make maybe a change here or there. And uh, for example, you don't, you've said you don't like the litigation report. Well, what if, uh, you know, we had a litigation report and we just said, right now we don't have any litigation, or right now the so and so case is ongoing, or right now, you know, you know, just one, it's not going to be much. It's going to be one sentence because. The other side of the coin is that the RCW allows and requires, doesn't really require, but it allows poor commissions to speak in executive sessions about the details of, of uh, potential lawsuits, actual and potential lawsuits. And so therefore, um, that's the proper place to do that because many people are listening and creating a stance or a position vis-a-vis uh, -vis their, their lawsuit. So obviously we cannot talk in any length in public about that. But, you know, maybe we can just say, you know, we don't have any lawsuits at the moment or whatever. So I appreciate those kinds of things that you bring to the table, talking to the public, you know, they're great ideas for us to, to mull over. Um, next, I'd like to congratulate uh, Deb Patton for becoming chair of the POCAC. Um, Deb has been a big supporter of the port for years and years and appreciate the time that she's put in and the POCAC is a great organization. I look forward to her joint meeting. <clears throat> um, I think that about covers it. Uh, I thank you all for your comments. Commissioner? Is, Is that you, Sam? Who's, who's talking? Valicia. Oh, Valicia, go ahead. Please. Yes, um, I think it'd be helpful for the commission if I just proactively addressed it that the port's resolution regarding standards of conduct for commissioners is resolution 2021-03. Okay. And that is the resolution that we would look at if we were ever trying to determine whether a commissioner had a situation in which they violated a uh, expectation or standard of conduct. So what we're saying is a conflict of interest would actually be a standard of conduct violation. And at this point, um, here on January 12th, uh, into Commissioner Evans and the other commissioner, uh, Commissioner Ayal's um, tenure as a commissioner, we do not have any activity or actions that have been taken that are known to me as the subject of a potential conduct violation. And so I wanted to point that out so that the commission is aware that with the agenda put forward today, there is no standard of conduct violation known to us that would impair the commission or give it pause to not taking the actions that are planned for this, after, for this evening. Thank you, Felicia. And what's that resolution again for the benefit of the public in case they want to look it up? And of course, in the interest of transparency, it's sitting right on our website somewhere. But yes, please. it is under um, on the commission page under resolutions. It's commission resolution 2021 03. Got it. Thank you. And Commissioner, if I, if I might additionally add, um, um, I am not in receipt of any type of communication at, at all, letter, uh, email, uh, anything with any type of uh, documentations or lodging of a complaint of um, conflict of, uh, of interest. Uh, I do not see the, the commission uh, email, so I don't know whether um, you have, have received it. It appears that um, uh, Commissioner Ayel ha has not, not received it, but I just wanted to make clear to the commission that, that I have not received any such communication. Right, and, and, and not to, thank you, and not to belabor the point, but I think that that resolution that Felicia mentions is when there's actually something on the horizon that would cause, be a cause for concern. And right now there's uh, nothing on the horizon. So. <clears throat> so, and I like what Commissioner Ayal said is, you know, we're focusing on, you know, what we can get done in, in the right direction. So thank you. Okay, then. Moving on to the next agenda item, which is election of officers under the action other calendar and Lisa Parks, our own uh, interim administrative services director is gonna kick this off, Lisa. Good evening, commissioners, can you hear me? Yes, yep. Okay, very good. So um, good evening, I uh, hope you are all doing well and enjoying the new year. Um, I'm going to run through a couple of different items uh, for you this evening on your action other calendar. Uh, we have one PowerPoint for all three items, so we'll uh, pause in between um, as we uh, move forward. So next slide, please, Shayla. 
So the first order of business is that the uh, commission annually elects officers to serve for the calendar year. Um, the appointments become effective immediately upon uh, an, improved, an approved motion. The three different positions according to the rules resolution are the president and the president presides at the meetings, uh, signs documents as directed and approved by the commission um, and works with the executive director to set agendas, uh, et cetera. The vice president performs the duties of the president um, when he or she may be absent. And then the secretary uh, works with staff to ensure that uh, we are preparing minutes and motions and resolutions um, that have been adopted by the commission. And so um, at this point in time, uh, we like to provide for your consideration a suggested motion to, to just help you with that process. Um, you're welcome, of course, to uh, develop your own motion. But in this case, the suggested motion would be uh, to appoint the uh, following Port, Olymp Port of Olympia Commission officers to serve during the calendar year 2022. And then you can um, uh, fill in the blanks as you may choose there for president, vice president, and secretary. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Um, I'd like to, uh, if I may, I'm kind of excited about this topic. And uh, I'd like to just kick things off, if I may, which is that, in my own words, and of course, Lisa's laid this out, but the chair of the Port Commission uh, works with most closely with the executive director to put together the agenda for each meeting. And that may, may require up to a once a week meeting with the executive director to go over the proposed agendas. And it's not like the other commissioners don't know the topics that are coming forward because we do have work sessions. And so, you know, there's many moving parts to the Port of Olympia. So when things are appropriate, they get put on an agenda. Of course, commissioners may bring agenda items right at the beginning of the meeting of any regularly scheduled uh, commission meeting on those two Monday nights. And so those, those are those opportunities. But the chair um, just basically does a lot of the legwork and setting up for the meetings. And beyond that, the Port Commission does act, you know, as a body. And the decisions we make, you know, contrary to one of the public comments, you know, I, I do favor the Port Commission, you know, trying to speak with one voice, especially once a vote is taken. And that's in one of our resolutions as well, is that supporting uh, the the Port Commission, uh, once a decision is taken, whether or not you're part of the majority, whether or not it's a 3-0 vote or a three to, two to one vote or what have you. Um, so anyway, uh, that's what the chair does. And, you know, I've been privileged to uh, be the chair uh, this past year. And so I would like to, you know, I'm interested in, in passing the torch and, you know, I think that, you know, I'm so impressed with Commissioner Evans and Commissioner IL in your background is such that you've been on boards and you've been in front of, <clears throat> you've been in front of boards and you've, you're, you are on boards and so both. And so I think you'll just do just fine. And it's not like I'm going to disappear if, uh, you know, uh, if you need any coaching of any sort. And I'm sorry that, you know, we, uh, we were going to have a retreat, but uh, mostly the COVID got in the way of that. And we were going to have a, we have an excellent uh, parliamentarian uh, on call. Her name is Ann McFarland, and she just does a fun and great job. Great job, but it's also very fun to learn about uh, the parliamentary rules. And uh, so that's a great resource. And so hopefully we'll have that soon. But, you know, those are my introductory remarks. And so now I'd like to turn it over to Commissioner Evans or Commissioner Ayal, what are your thoughts about, you know, how we should uh, lay this out in this for this present year? Um, it, well, I will uh, I will speak to that, and uh, uh, you know, I I agree that. Uh, um, um, well, first off, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner Downing, you you you've done a good job as the uh, as the uh, 
president in the past, and I, I appreciate your efforts. And uh, um, you know, we we all look forward to uh, a productive uh, next couple of years. Um, you know, I I just have to say that uh, you know, in light of some of the comments made tonight, and uh, um, the uh, uh, you know that 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 cloud that seems to be hanging over us. Um, I would recommend, and, and I'm prepared to make a motion, but I would recommend that uh, uh, I sit as president this first year, um, Commissioner Evans sit as vice president, and, and uh, uh, Commissioner Downing as secretary. Uh, I, I just think that would give us, some, uh, give us a little time to uh, take care of uh, uh, some of this business that needs to be uh, uh, addressed, and, uh, and so we can, we can move forward uh, um, unencumbered. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Ariel. Uh, Commissioner Evans, uh, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? Uh, I'm happy to serve in whatever capacity is going to be of best service for the port. So um, I have experience, as you said, running running boards and organizations, and so I'm comfortable taking a leadership role. And um, if the other, if you guys feel that there is a cloud um, on me as a leader, then I would defer to the two of you to take a different position. Or I would take a different position. So um, I'm open to guidance from the two of you as to what's going to be the best service to the group. Uh, so <laughs> let me let me just clarify, uh, Commissioner Evans, I certainly mean no disrespect, and I, I don't mean to say that there's a cloud over you. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the, you know, the commission and the port uh, overall. We, we all share in this, uh, we all share in this, uh, in these efforts. And, 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 and so we need to, we need to get through uh, whatever issues we may have. I, uh, you know, I am committed to getting through them. Um, as, as quickly and as expediently as possible. Uh, but I, I certainly mean no disrespect. Understood. Appreciate that. Well, thank you, uh, commissioners. I'm, I'm really, uh, I have to say, you know, I guess the time for, you know, frank discussion, you know, I try to, you know, try to be super diplomatic as much as you can in these meetings, but having served on this poor commission for six years, um, I'm gonna tell you that there's gonna people, there's gonna be people, there's gonna be a group of people that don't care about your, don't, don't see the way things, see things the way you see them. And so, you know, Commissioner Evans is gonna have probably some conflicts going forward when, when we get to public comment, she's gonna hear about people that just don't like the fact that you know, that uh, perhaps that, that she's in real estate development and, and Commissioner Ayal, they might not, not like the fact that, you know, uh, that you have certain interests that are not in their interests. And so um, this is a hard one for me because I really want to, um, you know, I'm, I'm praying that we work smoothly as a body and, and go forward together and, uh, you know, I just want to say, yet yeah, number one, those conflicts are going to be there, whether or not Amy's president or or Bob's president this first year. Um, but I think that if we work as a team, it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't matter a great deal. It's just a little bit more work, wherever the chair is. Because again, you know, you meet with. Uh, it's been fun. You know, I enjoy I've enjoyed meeting with Sam you know, as much as I have and so forth and so on and, and putting things together and, and bringing it forward. Uh, you know, it's all part of the process, but the real process happens when, when the three of us get together for our work session or for when our poor commission, in our poor commission meeting. So um, I guess I'll stop there. Let's just say, you know, I, I kind of like us to all be in agreement. And is there anything else you'd, you two would like to say? I guess based on that, uh, the discussion, I will make a motion to move to appoint the following Port of Olympia Commission officers to serve during calendar year 2022. 
Commissioner Bob Ayala is president, Commissioner Amy Evans is vice president, and Commissioner Joe Downing is secretary. Thank you, Commissioner Evans. Is there a second? I have a second, sorry, I was muted. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded to appoint the following Port of Olympia Commission officer to serve during calendar year 2022. <clears throat> Commissioner Bob Ayal as president, Commissioner Amy Evans as vice president, and Commissioner Joe Downing as secretary. Before we go to a vote, is there any other comment? We can, so sometimes we just do a, we, we move, make a motion and then we second it and then we pause for any other discussion. Uh, well, I think, you know, just a, a point of order uh, and, and it's really just a clarification, uh, uh, Commissioner Downing, that uh, um, I, that's the way I understand um, the, the, the procedure is when a motion is made, uh, once a second has been made, then that's, uh, that's really when the discussion is supposed to take place. Um, but, you know, I, I think we, we've, uh, um, I, I, I just, I, I don't have any further discussion on my end, that's all. Okay. Commissioner Evans, you good? No further discussion, thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, I think you're mostly correct there, uh, Commissioner Ayal. <clears throat> We've done it a little bit both ways. Uh, most interestingly, whenever we have a, uh, oh, what am I thinking? Whenever we have uh, an action other, I believe when we have an action other, since there's no advisory two weeks earlier, we don't actually take the vote until after we hear public comment. And so I think we're going to freeze this discussion, go through the rest of our action other calendar, have another public comment session, and then have a vote on each one. So I think that's the proper process for this evening. So I wanna thank you commissioners for that. And uh, I'm so looking forward to working with you. Okay. We're gonna move on to commissioner assignments. And Lisa, back to you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Downing. Uh, Shayla, um, thank you for putting that up for us. So um, each year also at the beginning of the year, the commission uh, uh, makes assignments uh, for each other where the commissioners are um, appointed to serve as the uh, representative of the Port of Olympia on uh, various boards and uh, uh, groups that we participate in. Uh, those are listed um, on your screen and the, um, the dates that they meet are uh, in the middle column. And as we move into a discussion about uh, these items, uh, uh, we'll uh, do a little bit of a switcheroo and, and I will share my screen and I can begin to fill in the blanks as you go through this conversation so that we can keep track of, of uh, which of you would like to serve on which board. So with that, I uh, would turn it back to you, Commissioner Downing. And um, if we're ready to, whenever you are ready for us to begin filling in some blanks, we can uh, switch the screen share here and, and I'll do that uh, for you. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Commissioner Evans and Commissioner Ayal, do you have a piece of paper and a pen handy? Yes. Okay, good. I do. All right. And so, because I don't know if you did like I did, but I've already divvied these up. <laughs> so I've made a, my own version. So, I mean, I think it's important to um, have some idea of what you'd like to serve on. I'd like to, uh, you know, start with the low hanging fruit and then move to the more difficult, if that's okay with you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. You good with that, Bob? Uh, yeah, I guess I was unmuted. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm fine with that. So, so uh, Commissioner Ayal, since you're in the uh, eastern part of the county, you know, we ultimately want to get to uh, 
I think five assignments each. And, but you're in the Eastern part of the county. So are you comfortable taking, for example, the uh, Yelm and the Lacey Chamber just as a, you know, first, first cut? Yes. And Commissioner Evans, are you comfortable taking the uh, Tumwater Chamber? Yes. As the first cut, okay. And let's say I take the Thurston County Chamber as the first cut. Now, the Thurston County Chamber is <clears throat> is uh, well attended. I'm sure you both have been to that multiple times, and it's a uh, it's a nice event. So it's really not not. You might say a real tough assignment, but you know, it's an assignment still. So uh, <clears throat> so let's just leave it at that. That's the Thurston County Chamber. Um, That's fine. And just, the, just for your information, I, I attend the Thurston County Chamber regularly myself. So, um, okay. you know, Good. for my Good. other business, but uh, having you as the representative there is, is, is fine with me. Okay, great. Now, uh, any objection to um, me attending the Tenino Chamber? because that's in my district, okay? Now, another one that's low hanging fruit would be the, um, the TRPC. Now, this is a little difficult because we haven't quite voted on the new chair yet, uh, but typically the TRPC is attended by the chair. I'm not sure what the history of that is, but it's it's a pretty important one, the TRPC, Thurston Regional Planning Council. I, I, I would just say that uh, uh, I don't, uh, um, if, if Chairman Evans wanted to take Thurston Regional Ca Planning Council, uh, I, I would be okay with that. And I would uh, be happy to um, take the uh, transportation policy board. Um, so either, either way, I'm, I'm good with that. I guess given the way it was presented from staff, it seemed like the vice president was on the transportation policy. It, do you guys right. see, well, and that's right. what is the staff's recommendation as far as how that would play? Uh, Sam, Executive Director Gibbony, do you have a comment on that? Sure. Um, I, 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 staff doesn't really ha have a recommendation. I do believe that there was thought in, in the past that um, the uh, vice uh, president could be on the policy board and then move into the position of, of serving on the uh, the full council. Given that we have uh, two new uh, commissioners, I don't know if that uh, same reasoning uh, applies here. So, uh, and, and either way, it's truly up to the discretion of the uh, of the commission. And staff is um, happy to uh, support with uh, policy background and uh, also to um, uh, attend when commissioners can. Well, I've, I've on my list, I've circled <clears throat> three things, three committees that are similarly important, if you will. I don't wanna say that, that chambers are not important or steady or WPPA or makerspace or any of those, but I will say that the TPB, Transportation Policy Board and the TRPC and the EDC are like in somewhat similar field and of, of some importance because what we do at those meetings is we talk about projects that are taking place in Thurston County and we have, we have a, uh, oftentimes a vote on the future of the acceptance of those projects. And those projects may require local monies, they may require federal monies, they may require uh, state WASHDOT monies um, or you know that what have you. 
And EDC is certainly a powerful driver for our own Thurston County community. So, you know, I kind of would recommend spreading those across. And so the TRPC and the TPB are linked together because whatever the TPB proposes, they bring it to the TRPC for final approval because the TPB is a subcommittee of the TRPC. And then there's the EDC. So I've served on the Transportation Policy Board. They meet, they met this morning. They meet on the, whatever it is, the second Wednesday at 7 a.m. And <clears throat> so I'm happy to continue with that or I'm happy to, uh, you know, perhaps switch to the EDC. So, um, you know, I'm open. So I think that we should just see what our thoughts, given that if you accept my uh, suggestion that, that we split those up, the TPB and the TRPC, TRP acronyms, TPB, TRPC, and the EDC. Well, given that it's customary for the chair to serve on the TRPC and the vice chair to serve on the TPB, that would then leave you with EDC and then we'd be following past procedure and filling those spots. Does that seem reasonable? That seems good with me, uh, Commissioner Evans. I don't, I don't have any objection. I'm making notes. Okay, so Lisa, you're doing a great job filling in the blanks so everybody can see. Um, now, I'm looking at the list here, what we've got left. The other one that I think we talked about last time as being a chair role was the WPPA trustee. Is that correct? But that is historically- Right, and that is, that's right. And that's uh, that belongs to the chair, so yeah. I would be um, happy to serve on steady if everyone else is okay with that. I've been attending those meetings regularly and it's in my district, at least part of it. Great. That's great. Good with you, Commissioner Ayala. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay. fine with that. Now the uh, Solid Waste Advisory Committee I have a somewhat of a soft spot for that because I like to think of myself as a lover of nature and the environment. And right now, uh, sea level rise and global warming is taking a major emphasis for all of us. But right behind that is, is just the solid waste flow and, and doing things to improve our solid waste flow. Every little things like plastic bag bans or bigger things like the newsletter that comes out in Thurston County. It's called Talking Trash and other things like they've been dealing with is uh, creating a new uh, transfer station in South County and where to put that and things like that. So pretty big, important things. Um, I had that. I also had the Visitor, Visitor and Convention Bureau and I have a soft spot for that too, but I feel like, you know, it's good to mix it up. I think I've been on that board for, because I've been able to influence past commissions to let me stay on that one. So uh, I was on that one for three or four years. And so it's probably a good thing for me to rotate off. So um, I guess I'm asking, you know, I want to ask for your thoughts because maybe I shouldn't have either one of these, but, you know, is somebody willing to step up for one of these because they're really uh, both of them are county wide in, in importance. I'm fine with you staying on solid waste and deferring. If you think that we need rotation on the VCB, that's okay. Or if you would prefer to stay on that for continuity, sometimes there can be benefits to that. So are you making the recommendation, Joe, that you step off of VCB? Yeah, more or less, more or less. Okay. I'm opening that up to discussion, right. 
And then given some of uh, Bob's comments in the previous meeting, the sea level rise committee might be something he was interested in. I'm not sure, Bob, is that one that you would want to attend? I guess that's less regularly. Yeah, I would be, I, I would be willing to do that. Um, I, okay. I, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not carrying my weight here anyway. I'm <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I, okay. I would be, I would be happy to do the sea level rise. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Bob. And thank you, Amy, for those suggestions. Bob, are you okay with um, Joe staying on as the solid waste? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Oh. I do have an interest in the maker space. Um, I'm not married to that, but um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, and the VCB, I could go either way. Bob, is that something that's of interest to you, the VCB? I think it's, they're doing really cool stuff too. All, all of these, there's a lot of interesting activity, but. Do you have any other strong? Uh, yeah, I don't really have any other real strong ones. I'd, I'd be happy to, um, if you want to do the makerspace, that's fine. I'm happy, I, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, so am I. I think the other um, one is the, Capital Lake, obviously, that's a you know, that's a an area that we're going to be focusing on. So um, that one probably is. We we may need some discussion. I don't know, maybe not. Um, sure, we can we can tackle that one next because we're and remember at the end of this discussion, we need to uh, make sure it's equitable. I haven't done a account, but. Anyway, we'll get to that. So Capital Lake, um, I'm gonna make a strong pitch. I'd like to be on that executive work group. And what that entails is <clears throat> potentially about two meetings. So it, I think it indicates quarterly, um, yeah, schedule quarterly, but uh, <clears throat> the process in mo is in motion. Um, 2021 was a big year for that. Uh, Commissioner Zita served on that committee um, and they, they did a, what do you call it? Decision durability analysis. They also came out with a draft EIS. The port of Olympia uh, put together, and I think, thank you, Lisa, for helping with that, put together a six page uh, comment letter on the uh, draft EIS. And so, so what we're looking at in 2022 is probably a couple of meetings of the executive work group, which the other commissioners are able to attend. It's just that whoever's on the executive work group, the other commissioner listens to that discussion, but doesn't give any, any comment whatsoever because that would make it a public meeting. So we don't want to do that. And but you're but I strongly would encourage all the commissioners to attend because 2022, what we've got mid year is the final EIS coming out. So this EIS is going to come out, and that becomes a discussion for the Port of Olympia Commission. Um, presuming, presuming we want to have a discussion, and presuming we want to have comment on the uh, draft EIS. And so I don't know quite what happens after June, but, but um, given the fact that Commissioner Zita was on it last year and she had a perhaps, you know, a different type of contribution that I would have. Um, and what I would like to propose is that, that I serve on that capital executive work group. I invite, I let my fellow commissioners know that the meeting, make sure you know that the meeting uh, proposed meeting is at such and such a time and you know so on and so forth in the agenda and then then I bring a report back to you in the uh, commission report section right after the meeting at the very next port commission meeting after the executive work group meeting so um, I think that it's uh, it's obviously of great interest to the port because the port is affected in a big way by uh, the type of alternative that they might choose. And so 
I'm asking for your support along those lines. I, I'm okay with that. Um, if if, uh, if Joe is the representative, uh, I, I more than likely would like to attend those uh, um, just for my own personal interest, I guess. Not well, uh, for my own educational um, person. So I, so I understand, you know, all of what's going on and get a better understanding. So um, that, that's fine with me, Joe. Okay. If, if Joe, if you were to take Capital Lake and I took the VCB and Grand Mound Rochester Chamber, we'd have a pretty even, uh, even a number of assignments amongst ourselves. Do we? Okay. I yeah, was, Bob, because you, you've got five, and then Joe would have five, and I would have six. So, um, and some of those ones that you guys are on are going to be a more robust commitment, I think. So, I, that, that looks good to me. Yeah. Me too. Okay, I've looked at my list on this right on looking at the, we're sh screen sharing. So Commissioner Ayal and Commissioner Evans, are you both okay with those roughed in assignments, shall we say? Yes. Yes. Good. Good. That's an even split. Um, that's a good split. I think it's good. And uh, and I want to say that, well, thank you for attending these meetings. It's important that we do attend or find an alternate. As I mentioned, uh, I'm going to hit somebody with an assignment. Let's see, TRPC goes to probably uh, Commissioner IL, and they have a meeting this Friday morning at uh, whatever time it is. I think I sent an informational email out about 8.30 a.m., I believe, on Friday morning. Do you know, so, are they holding now, those in? Are, are they holding those in person now, or are those? Uh, um, pretty sure they're Zoom. Yeah, pretty sure they're Zoom. Okay. Because TPB right. is still Zoom. Um, I'm trying to think who is not, who is in person. I can't think of. Uh, well, I, I guess I wouldn't know about the EDC because I haven't served on that board in a couple of years, so I'm a little out of touch with that. Um, Sam, I can uh, ask you for an, uh, give you a small assignment if I could which is uh, many of these, or Lisa, many of these boards require a little bit of notification. Well, obvious notification would be that Amy, uh, Commissioner Evans is working for the VCB or working on those meetings. So therefore they need to have her email address to be able to send her an invite. You know, that's the obvious reason. And, and things like uh, anything affiliated with uh, Thurston County, like solid waste advisory committee, you have to just write a two sentence email to the mm -hmm. Thurston County and say, you know, do you accept Joe Downing as joining this board for 2022? So if you don't mind doing that administrative work and that would be great. And then we can, uh, well, assuming we, assuming this is our final layout. So I don't want to jump the gun here because we've got a couple more steps. Thank you. Okay, any other comments before we move forward with the meeting? Good, none for me. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda then is uh, action of the calendar number three, resolution 2022-01, surplus property disposal dollar limit. Back to you, Lisa. Thank you. Um, next, there we go. So um, the RCW allows for uh, um, uh, selling and divesting uh, ourselves of our both our real and our personal property. Um, it has a process for doing so, <clears throat> and it allows for uh, port commissions annually <coughs> to authorize the executive director to sell port 
uh, property that's below a stated value that you state in uh, by resolution. Um, in the RCW, it talks about a $10,000 uh, limit, but then there's an additional um, item that um, allows that $10,000 to be adjusted based on a, a government price index. Um, in the case of the of, uh, the allowance, this allowance for surplusing property, it doesn't allow uh, port property to be surplused by the executive director that is above that limit. Those items have to go uh, before the port commission individually. It also does not allow property that's included on and identified it as part of the port's assets in the port's comprehensive scheme of harbor improvements. And then the port policy actually adds another restriction and it basically indicates that the port can't, uh, the executive director um, can't uh, surplus any real port property, so uh, any land. Um, so in this case, um, our surplus uh, property authorization to the ED only applies to personal property. So equipment, uh, those types of things. Uh, once the resolution is passed, uh, setting the dollar limit uh, before selling that uh, those items, the executive director um, uh, causes a, a list of those items to be compiled, certifies to the commission that that property is no longer needed for port purposes, and then we let you know uh, that that certification has happened. And then at that point in time, we typically um, forward that list to the State Department of Enterprise Services. We have a, uh, an agreement with them that uh, they then make a determination whether the, those items are sold or, or um, uh, thrown out or, or whatever. So in this case then, um, working with Matt, uh, we looked at the Washington State Department of Revenue property tax inflation rate. Um, and we applied that to come up with the VAT dollar value that you see in front of you, which this year is $19,427. So the idea is that each individual item that is uh, less than that value uh, is allowed to be surplused uh, by the executive director through this process uh, if you choose to adopt this resolution. Next slide, please, Shayla. So this would be a suggested motion that would uh, allow us to move forward with this process. Um, this resolution, if you adopt it, is only good for one calendar year. So we have to do this again. This is one of those routine items that we cover on an annual basis at the first meeting of the year. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Lisa. Um, can you go back one slide, please? I have a question. So the second to the last bullet point before selling, executive director compi compiles a list, certifies to commission the property is no longer needed for per port purposes. So this is port surplus property, which we've seen in the past. And maybe it's a once a year occurrence where there's a, a few items such as old tractors that we no longer need and, and you're seeking approval for the auction? Yeah, so um, in, in this case, uh, what we're referring to specifically are only those personal property items that are under that $19,000 uh, limit. Um, if, um, and yes, we try to do that only once a year. We try to, we go through a process here very shortly to request uh, directors to let us know if they have property that needs to be surplused. We create the list. And then the RCW actually requires us to cert the executive director to certify to you, the commission, that that property is no longer needed for port purposes. And then once we do that, we can send that along. In the case of anything that's over that $19,000 limit, or if it's on the comprehensive scheme of harbor improvements, or by port policy, if it's real property uh, that we are trying to surplus, then, then that follows a, a different and a separate process that applies to that one individual item, if that makes sense. Okay, got it. Thank you for that clarification. So, Commissioner Evans or Ayal, do you have any other questions or comments on this topic? Uh, I do not. I okay. Just, uh, I guess one, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I understand uh, what, what this is about, but I, I'm just trying to picture what type of, uh, uh, what type of property might be sold and, and what I 
what I what I've come up with in my own mind is that this is maybe, uh, for example, some equipment that has been um, utilized at one of the port entities and has outlived its life and we're selling it for salvage value. It essentially, um, we're required to basically inventory and, and, and identify all, all assets, whether it's, um, you know, regardless of the size or the value. So it could be a, um, a cell phone or a tablet, for example, or it might be a lawnmower that is, you know, a, a push lawnmower that's no longer necessary. Um, it could be um, any, anything that could be considered personal property that does not have a value greater than whatever the limit is that is set by the commission by, by this resolution uh, would go on that list. And like I said, we, um, our practice, we have an agreement with Department of Enterprise Services for them to uh, collect the items that we put on this list um, mm -hmm. after we um, uh, create it and declare it certif uh, certify that it's um, uh, no longer necessary and they they take care of it from that from that standpoint. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think it's our job to oversee Sam in carrying out her duties, uh, and we want to give her the tools to do her job. So this seems like a good tool to do her job. Uh, Lisa, could you go to the next slide so I could make the motion, please? Um, I move to approve resolution 2022-01, authorizing the executive director to dispose of surplus port district personal property of less than $19,427 in individual value for the calendar year of 2022. Thank you, Commissioner Evans. Is there a second? So did I misunderstand that we were going to do all of these after public comment? That's correct. And I, I realized an error. I'm about to fix it. Okay. <laughs> so watch me. What I need right now is a second, please, on this uh, Commissioner Evans motion. I'll second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2022. Dash 01, authorizing executive director to dispose of surplus port district personal property of less than $19,427 in individual value for the calendar year 2022. So before we take action on this, we'll go to, we'll get public comment, but then I realized we didn't do a motion on the prior agenda item. So could we go back a slide, please? I just, can I just clarify, since I'm new to the process, so is it that oh, we yeah. make a motion and get a second and then delay taking a vote, or is it that we, moving forward, would we delay making the motion until the after public comment, or would we make the motion, get the second, and then just vote after the public comment? Well, yes, yes and no, Commissioner Evans. So there's depending on the process. So if there's, uh, we have three types of uh, activities at a commission meeting, we might have an advisory in which a topic is presented for the first time. Then two weeks later, we might have an action item, which is the action on the advisory from two weeks earlier. And we do not have public comment before we take a vote on an action item, but Tonight, we have three items under action slash other, <clears throat> none of which have had advisories. And so they're new to the public. And so we'd like to give the public a chance to weigh in on individual topics. So we have tonight two public comment periods, one at the beginning of the meeting for general public comment about any port issue, and a second public comment meeting, which is specific to the action other items. And so, so what we're doing right now is we're going through and having our discussion and we like the topic enough that somebody makes a motion and somebody else makes a second and then we stop there Got until it. we Thank have public comment. Thank Got you it? for clarifying, yep. Okay, thanks. And so occasionally uh, we don't follow Robert's rules 100% and whoever the chair becomes, the other two commissioners are feel free to uh, <clears throat> back them up with correction, uh, just very, say very politely, uh, point of order. And then the chair says, what's your point? And you state your point and the chair either agrees or disagrees. 
if they disagree with you, then you can say, I'd like to appeal. And then you would need the other commissioner to join you in that appeal. And then the chair has to, you know, respond. So in other words, the chair is a person who coordinates the play, but doesn't write the play, if you, if you like that analogy. So, um, you know, that's, so, so let's just say that uh, Commissioner Ayel caught my mistake and he said, point of order, Commissioner Downing, uh, can you go back one topic and, you know, make a motion or somebody make a motion on the last action other item? And as soon as he says, says that, I go to myself, oh, crap, you know, but out loud, I say, your uh, point is well taken. We'll go back and we'll make a motion in a second on that last item. So, Lisa, can you roll back the, the slide to the, uh, the 15 committees? Yeah, let me, um, Shayla, I'm going to share one more time again so we can look at my screen since it has the filled in the blanks. All right, is it there? It's coming. There it is. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that the Port Commission approve the following commissioner assignments to the various <clears throat> entities, groups, and boards within the county that the Port Commission will serve on in the year 2022. And further, rather than read them aloud, I'd like to use this slide as a, a backup for my motion. I'll second that. So it's been moved and seconded to approve the 2022 Commission Committee assignments as referred to on this slide as worked up this evening. Thank you. So now we're going to turn to ask for public comment on any of the three action other items, if there is any. One is election of officers, the other is commissioner assignments, and the third is the resolution 2022-01 surplus property disposal dollar limit. So, whoops. So I see two hands raised. I see Deborah Patton with her hands raised. Deborah Patton, would you like to give public comment at this time? Yes, I would. Thank you so much, Commissioner Downing. I would uh, first like to compliment all three of you on your collegial and civil discourse tonight. It is so refreshing and it's just so nice to see you all cooperating and discussing and it's just it's just so heartening as we go into this new year so uh, thank you all three for that and um, I do agree uh, that your division of the commissioner assignments is equitable and fair and you traded back and forth uh, so that uh, each person each commissioner um, uh, got to state uh, what was dear to their heart and um, I think that'll be wonderful as you move forward into those responsibilities in the new year. And uh, I agree that the um, motion for the election of officers seems reasonable and fair. And so I'm in favor of that. So again, just thank you for your collegiality and your civility. Thank you, Ms. Padden, for your comments. Next, we have Carla Wolfsburg. Ms. Wolfsburg, would you like to speak? Yes, I would. Thank you. Um, so I would just like to address the committee assignments. Um, just that I would like to recommend that the Capital Lake Deschutes Estuary Project be represented by um, the new chair of the commission, uh, Commissioner Eyal, uh, mainly because Mr. Eyal was very strong in his interest in Bud Bay during his campaign. And I think he is likely more, more available to see the entire project without previous background or influences. And 
I just think that he would be a better representation or a person better uh, able to represent the port, just seeing it with new eyes and being able to evaluate it in a very um, even way with a very strong um, background in an interest in environmental issues. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wolfsburg, for your comments. Uh, I see uh, Mr. Newman has, John Newman has his hand raised. Mr. Newman, would you like to speak? Hello, can you hear me, Commissioner? Yes, hi. Okay, great. Um, yes, um, I know we're headed into a new year and um, I wish to thank uh, Commissioner Downing for all his past services and uh, his experiences. I agree with the last speaker that um, Capital Lake Estuary is incredibly important to Bud Inlet and the port and the citizens of the county. And um, <clears throat> I think that Commissioner Bob Ayal should sit on that committee as we move forward after another uh, four to five years of state expenditures uh, to work on the new EIS and um, um, and that's my comment. I think Bob Ayal should be uh, the spokesperson for that project. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Newman. I see that uh, I'm going to, I see JJ would like to give public comment. Is there a person named JJ uh, on the phone tonight? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, I've only been able to attend part of the meeting because I had my own uh, tree group meeting where we were trying to locally protect and preserve the urban forest in um, Thurston County. But I did come soon enough to find that um, I definitely want to put a voice in for uh, Commissioner Isle being uh, the best protector of waters in our region. And he should absolutely be first in line to represent um, our region on that front because no one protects the environment and protects the waters better than the tribes. So Commissioner Isle is uniquely qualified to be in such a position. I wanna make that strong association here tonight and I want to make sure that uh, the port um, executive leadership and the port commission is acting on the best uh, the best ways to represent our entire region and for the best outcomes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. JJ. I see uh, L, L. Renner would like to give public comment. Uh, Ms. Renner, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, we can hear you, Lee. I can't hear. Can't hear. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, I just was um, wanting to say that um, um, I wanted to echo what <clears throat> the lady just before me said, that um, the waters of Bud Inlet, the waters of Puget Sound have been sacred to the tribes for generations, generations of people. These waters out here in Bud Inlet have been plied by tribal people since the beginning of time. And I think it's only fitting that uh, our first tribal representative, Mr. Bob Ayal, be allowed to be the chair of the um, Capital Lake Committee. I know that um, when Joe Downing first started this meeting, he said that he was going to turn the meeting over to the chair and obviously that never happened. And uh, we're hoping that we can uh, go forward uh, with this discussion. But my concern is that uh, we need to have tribal leadership dealing with the sacred waters of Puget Sound and the sacred waters of Bud Inlet, which is part of Capital Lake, the Deschutes Estuary, the Deschutes River, coming down 
through the mountains down toward Bud Inlet, it's so beautiful. Tribal people have been here since millennia. And I think it's only right that Bob Iall um, chair that committee. So I just wanted to echo those voices. I think it's a very important issue. I know that some people might feel that um, there have been certain inequities in tonight's meeting. So Robert, rules of order were not followed. There was a shuffling of the um, issues. And um, when we elected the chair, the chair, chair should have ran the meeting. So I'm just wondering now um, if we can go forward and um, actually have someone uh, who has been involved with tribal issues and tribal water for Puget Sound for a long time, have that person chair the uh, Capitol Lake um, estuary committee. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Renner. Is there anybody else like to give a public comment on action other items of this evening? Anybody else? Okay, seeing no other public comment, I'd like to go move forward to uh, finish the commission's business here, which we have three action other items. And I'm gonna ask Lisa to share that, the motion screen one at a time, starting with the first one there, uh, starting with the election of officers and then the commissioner assignments and then the surplus property resolution so we can take action on these this evening. So, uh, so I'd like to, uh, you know, uh, make <laughs> give a message to the public that I'm doing my best to follow Robert's rules of order. And uh, I think I made one faux pas this evening. I'm sorry for that. Um, but we've made uh, a motion and a second already to move to appoint the following Port of Olympia Commission officers to serve during calendar year 2022. Commissioner Bob Ayala as president, Commissioner Amy Evans as vice president, and Commissioner Joe Downing as secretary. Uh, before we uh, move to a vote, is there any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Congratulations, Commissioner Ayal. From this second forward, you are the chair of the Port Commission. And uh, the remaining business, as I pass the torch to you, is approval of the next two resolutions. Well, thank you, Commissioner Downing. And thank you, Commissioner Evans, and uh, all of the uh, all of the public speakers tonight, I, I, I appreciate everybody's kind words, and uh, um, we're gonna we're gonna do all we can to make this uh, uh, a, a really good year coming forward. Um, so the next uh, the next item is the commission uh, committee assignments. Uh, we've had a motion um, uh, we've had a motion on the floor that's been seconded. Uh, is there any other? Um, discussion on that uh, motion. No. I'd like to yes. say, I have yes, a comment on it, which is, thank you, uh, Commissioner Ayal. I'd just like to say that, thank you, Commissioners, for your uh, anticipated support of me serving on the Capitol Lake Shoots Estuary Executive Work Group. I think that in uh, Port Commission, management and community balance. There has to be balance of points of view. As I mentioned, we did have Commissioner Zita on the executive work group last year. Um, I mentioned that uh, I want to keep my commissioners uh, fully involved and informed, involved and informed about this process as we move forward. Um, I think it'll go forward probably for years, but again, we've got 2022 in front of us when we're expecting the uh, EIS to come out. So I appreciate your support 
and I appreciate the uh, some of the opinions voiced earlier this evening as well. Commissioner Evans, any comment? Nothing further. Um, okay, I, I I would like to make one comment. I I, I do appreciate all of the, uh, the the speakers tonight and 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 their support and their kind words. Uh, a support of uh, of me and being at the uh, um, the estuary executive work group. Um, I, I want everybody to know that uh, you know, like we talked about earlier in the evening, that uh, uh, as port commissioners, we are we are bound to uh, um, our code of ethics and our our duty of loyalty to to the port, our duty of care to make uh, make. Uh, um, make informed and objective decisions for uh, the port and our fiduciary responsibility to uh, uh, to uh, act in the best interest of the of the citizens of Thurston County and 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 though I I, I won't be the official representative of the uh, Deschutes Estuary Executive Work Group um, like I mentioned earlier I do want to attend and I certainly will have uh, uh, input and 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 uh, uh, participation and 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 be ready to uh, uh, tackle any issues that the port is faced with. So, um, uh, thanks again for all of that. Uh, we have a motion and uh, a second. Uh, and if there's no other um, uh, no other discussion, uh, a call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Um, so that motion passes. Thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, the surplus property dollar value limit. Uh, we've had a motion. Um, we've had a motion made and seconded, um, which uh, the motion is to approve resolution 202201 authorizing the executive director to dispose of surplus port district personal property of less than $19,427 in individual value for calendar year 2022. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, there are none, so this motion carries. Um, and, and thank you all very much. Uh, we got through uh, we got through our action other calendar. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, advisory calendar. There's nothing on that advisory calendar. Um, the next uh, the next item is uh, commissioner reports. Um, does uh, uh, Commissioner Downing or Commissioner Evans uh, have anything to report this week? Uh, uh, okay. Nope. Okay. I'm good. It was quiet, quiet couple of weeks. Okay. Um, I'll make a quick report. Um, uh, I, I mentioned at the, uh, um, our work session last week that I did attend the Lacey South Sound, uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, forum where, uh, Lieutenant Governor, um, uh, Denny Heck gave a report on the, um, the economy, the econ economic forecast, uh, for the next year or so. Um, I also attended today, I attended the Thurston County Chambers Forum where um, mayors of uh, Tumwater, uh, Lacey, Olympia, Yelm, and uh, outgoing uh, County Commission Chairman Ty Menser uh, all gave a, a, a talk on uh, the economic forecast for, uh, for their communities and, and Thurston County, it was, it, was, uh, uh, it, was, it was very interesting, good to hear their points of view. Um, uh, uh, the main topic uh, across the board, really, even from Denny Heck to uh, uh, the, the folks today was uh, tackling the homelessness issue and, and uh, working on, uh, um, uh, you know, solving the, the lack of housing um, issue that uh, we're facing countywide and nationwide, really. Uh, so it was a, a, a good, uh, a good forum. And uh, it was actually quite well attended uh, for an in-person uh, uh, forum that uh, surprised me a little bit, but it was, it was good. So um, that's all I have to report. 
Um, is there any other business that we need to discuss this evening? Um, hearing none, I guess we'll move on to the next one. Okay, excuse me, Commissioner Downing, go ahead. Just, you know, I don't want this meeting to end because it's gone <laughs> so well. And uh, do you have any questions? I mean, you know, any questions that popped up about of a general nature that uh, either myself or Sam or Valicia can help you with or Lisa or Shayla, any questions? Um, yeah, right now I, I I I can't think of any. Amy, do you have any? Okay, Commissioner Evans. No, no I'm just getting my email going uh, based on some of uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, so if I haven't responded to public comment, I will do so. Uh, I am now receiving emails at my port email um, and intend to respond to those promptly. Okay. Well, that's great. And while you're at it, uh, Amy, I don't know. Probably Sam has told you this already or somebody, but. Uh, Anytime, uh, if you wouldn't mind, when you if you do are motivated uh, um, to respond to the public, meaning meaning sometimes it's not in your area, and sometimes you might forward it to a port staff member. But always, uh, always copy uh, Jenny Folia Jones, and because she keeps our permanent record of correspondence with the public, and you know, and and if you ever have any questions about. Is your response appropriate or in conflict with an existing resolution or existing port policy? Feel free to check with uh, you know, staff. That's all I wanna say. Thank you for that question. All right, thank you. Um, next is a meeting announcement. Um, um, Executive Director Gimini, is there anything, any meeting announcements? There you go. So um, we have uh, I canceled the work session that was um, scheduled for next Tuesday. It was going to be a special session, but given our staffing levels um, uh, due to absenteeism uh, related to uh, COVID, we um, are, are canceling that one. Our next regular scheduled uh, business meeting will be on January 24th at the regular scheduled time of 530. Okay, um, well that, um, um, un unfortunately, Commissioner Downing, it looks like we've come to the end. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, wait, there's somebody else that wants to say something. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not a little bit under the weather. And if any of you have pets, you know that they know when you're under the weather and they come to your, they start hanging out with you. So look at this, my little kitty, our little kitty, Cassie. He said, so I'm checking up on dad. Okay. So thank you for that little bit of humor. Well, that's, that's good. And my, my constant companion bruiser is right next to me too. So good. Um, that, that, that's great. Um, I just want to inform the commission. There is a new zoom rule that if you do have pets with you in the room, you must introduce them to the rest of the group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, all right. Um, uh, and I guess I'll accept an, a, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody. It was a great meeting. Thank you. Good meeting. Bye.